I don't know the guy. Not only do I roast him, but I kind of just for, you know, shits and giggles and laughs, man, I, I, I judged him, too. Look at them eyes, shifty. He look like he up to some shit. He get that goddamn camera off my face, man. Now, I'm kind of mad at myself because turns out I was absolutely mm. right about this guy. <laughs> you don't know. You, you ain't taking it soft. <laughs> oh, 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 no, 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 no. Scratch that. I, I was I was wrong. I was absolutely wrong. He's much worse. Yeah, much worse. Much worse than I thought he would be. And I knew he was shady and shifty right there. Yeah. But he ended up being, ended up being a goddamn psychopath. A psychopathic con man. Double toasted on Broadway. So, a lot of people are eager to let us know that we were hanging out with old Max. They're, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> HBO. HBO. It's all the same damn yeah, thing. It is. It is. Yeah, a lot of people are quick to let us know that we were on the HBO documentary BS High. And that is about the notorious fake school uh, uh, called Bishop Sycamore and how their fake coach, Roy Johnson, that you see right here, how he fast talked his way into an ESPN broadcast high, broadcasted high school game. And of course, it all ended in national embarrassment. <laughs> As not only it was uh, discovered that they had a bunch of, uh, of adults on the team who were playing 15 year olds and 14 year olds, uh, but also they sucked. They sucked. They were terrible. They were terrible. Uh, and you hear that with uh, Billy and myself gleefully pointing this out at the beginning of the documentary. Bishop Sycamore. He's like an old pimp. Mm -hmm. Bishop yeah, Sycamore. Bishop. They got on ESPN and got their asses wiped out. And Joan Holden. I like the way they picked that quote from me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just to let you know. They didn't get beat. They got yeah, their yeah, asses, asses wiped, wiped out. I think that's why they got our video, because we just laid it out <laughs> yeah, there, man. Right. With one hand, low throw, it's caught. Sycamore, they were a bit of a mystery in this game. <laughs> okay, this is there's another one. This is... There's another spark you can hear uh, Billy and myself just roasting this team. ESPN's <laughs> <laughs> top producing comedy. Division one prospects. <laughs> Look at this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that is not the only part that we're shown in. So there's another part where I comment on the quote unquote coach Roy Johnson. And I actually felt a little bad, Martin, because we, we, we roasted this dude pretty bad. And not only did I roast him, I don't know the guy, not only did I roast him, but I kind of, just for you know shits and giggles and laughs, man, I, I, I judged him too. Look at them eyes, shifty. He looked like he up to some shit. He gifted. He's like, get that, yeah, yeah, he's like, get that like goddamn that. camera off my face, man. Now I'm kind of mad at myself because turns out I was absolutely mm. right about this guy. <laughs> you don't know. You you ain't taking it soft. <laughs> oh, 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 no, 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 no. Scratch that. I, I was I was wrong. I was absolutely wrong. He's much worse. Yeah, much worse. Much worse than I thought he would be. And I knew he was shady and shifty right there. Yeah. But he ended up being, ended up being a goddamn psychopath. A psychopathic con man. Yeah. Yeah, it ended up being that this dude was so much worse than any of us could have imagined. <laughs> IMG to kick off to Bishop Sycamore. Do I look like a con artist? Yes. Yes. From the moment he sat down. Just even having to ask that. Yeah. You go like, oh, you asked that question, then yes. The moment he sat down giggling and, and, and mm -hmm. laughing and everything, uh, yeah, that's, that's what a con man does. You know, yeah. they, try to, they try to get you at ease by having like a laid back and jovial demeanor themselves. Yes, to, to come off like, Everybody's making a bigger deal out of this than what it is. Like, no, they're not. <laughs> no, no, they're not. The only thing, like, like I said, the only thing that people were wrong about is that they didn't know that you were this bad. Mm -hmm. They didn't know that you, you were co like a complete piece of shit. How this happens got a lot of people scratching their head. My philosophy of business is do what the people who have the money do, even if you don't have the money. All right, see, that should tell you something right there. Right. That's that that that's his business. Mm -hmm. That's his, that that is his business creed that he goes by. Right, fake it till you make it, or even if you don't make it, yeah. just keep faking it. Do what the people do who have the money, even if you don't have the money. You know, if you don't have the money, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what any other business person would tell you. Uh huh. 
I think I'm the most honest liar that I know. Boy, this guy's boy, he got wisdom all through this thing. That's what, I was like, man, you you have got to be so buffaloed to hear somebody say something like, I'm the most honest liar I know. To for you to go like, yeah, it's like, no. No, no. Because let me tell you something. You're the most honest liar that you know. Well, at the end of it, you're still a goddamn you're still, liar. You're still a liar, yes. You're still a liar at the end of it. Yes. Plus, admitting that you're a liar means what you just said was a lie. I'm the <laughs> nicest murderer that you know, Mark. I mean, I kill people. But, but, but I'm nice about but it. But I'm very polite about it, and I have a very charming demeanor when I'm not killing people. Yeah. But even I'm the, I'm the most honest liar. It's like, that's probably a lie, what you just said. If, if you got a negative in there, it don't make any goddamn difference, it okay? It doesn't. I'm the most honest liar, grifter, yeah. murderer, Nazi. None of this shit yeah, makes it, like it doesn't says, make any sense. Everything I say from now on is the truth, but I was just lying to you. <laughs> like, okay, well, thank you. Wow. I mean, I give it to this guy. He's got some balls, man. He's got the... the Actually, he's, it's, it's, it's not balls. It's a lack of empathy. He, no, he's, you know, it was, yeah, it's lack of empathy. Crazy. It's not to be used as an excuse. No. He, but he legitimately, he is insane. Yeah. We're on ESPN. Win, lose, or draw, we win. How do I tell my mama that coach wants me to do the same stuff that you try to get me away from? You say you care about that. But <laughs> well, these kids told it like it was. But by the end of it, they say we don't get no anymore. Yeah, yeah it's, it's 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 actually pretty Alert terrible. From reminders. It is terrible. No, it's it's completely like, like like as much as as he likes to say nobody was hurt. We did all this. You get to see what the actual fallout is. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. He's one of these kind of people where he's going to do whatever he has to do to get done what he wants to get done. Yeah, but does not look, notice, or care about the fallout. What Boy. how anybody else is affected by. No, it. wants me to do the same stuff that you try to get me away from. Can we take a break? That's some bullshit. Oh, there's that Max. I, I told you, I told you Max was in here somewhere. I know. Yeah, no, it's in there somewhere. You got you got to go through Max to get to HBO. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to my boy Max. Uh, let me just cut to the chase. This man is the devil. If I saw, actually, if I saw him shake the devil's hand, I'd tell the devil, run, yeah, yeah. run. Don't listen to anything he just said. Do not go near that man. He's a complete narcissist sociopath. He has no feelings for anyone but himself. He actually, all the time I was looking at him, he reminded me of somebody else. My nigga. <laughs> he, is Al- he is the Alonzo from Trading Day of high school football. <laughs> That's what he is. <laughs> he even, this is how I, you know, I knew that he was crooked early on the document, do- documentary because he even has a laugh like Alonzo. Yeah. Yeah, he's sitting up there grinning and laughing. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot with what I've done I've known a lot of con men and almost all of them got that laugh well that yeah 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 the staring into the camera I was like yeah, he's performing oh yeah he's got he's got a camera on him this is his element because in his mind hey now I can con millions of people who turn in and it's like, okay, I guess you, uh, you, you, you're not in person and everybody no. can see how full of shit you are. I don't, I don't think there's one hand that he shook that he hasn't crossed. I don't think there's one transaction that he's made where he hasn't ripped somebody off, at least going by this documentary. I mean, uh, he got, he's got one person. What the shit, shit, the man's inspiration. The man's inspiration is one of the most crooked people of all time. I would talk to them about recruiting football and I would use Suge Knight's line. You want to go to college? If you don't want your coach all up on your Twitter. This man's inspiration, hero is Suge Knight. Mm -hmm. One of the most crooked ass uh, 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 record label owners of all time. Mm -hmm. That should tell you something right there. The moment moment that he started preaching Suge Knight to these kids, they should have got the and walked out. I know. I know, they're just young enough to wait. Maybe they don't know who Suge Knight is. Oh, they know who Suge Knight is. <laughs> they, I mean, like, I ain't saying they deserve what they got, but the moment he started talking about Suge Knight, they should have got up and left. But well, you remember who his other inspiration was? Magneto. Oh, man, he's such a nerd. <laughs> I know. Magneto and Hannibal from the A-Team. Yeah. <laughs> who, who was your other one? Goddamn Splinter from the Teenage Ninja Turtles. Was stupid ass. That's the fascinating thing about this documentary, man is that right when you think that Roy Johnson 
the, the, the main subject of this documentary, the Romans, you think that he couldn't sink any lower. He does. He does. But the documentary also explores a very important question, and that is, how did this man get this far? You know, how do you do this? And I'll tell you what, if there's one good message that you can get from this documentary, uh, if you believe in yourself, you can accomplish wonders. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say, now this is believing in yourself gone wrong. Yeah. You know, because if you start believing <laughs> your own bullshit. <laughs> if you believe only in yourself. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, but no, just just watch him throughout this. I just thought, man, this I, I get such Trump vibes from this guy. Yes. Because it's 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 all the, the con man ticks. It's the finding people who are desperate Tell them what they want to hear. But the biggest thing he did that's almost like a, I can't blame him. And the same with Trump is that the two of them, they they were just good about finding loopholes in the system. Yeah. Places where the system wasn't tight, where where it was either based on honor or the, the idea that like, well, nobody's corrupt enough to manipulate and do these things. And yeah. they were like, shit, no. I am. Yeah. You, you know, you, hey, you didn't make it to where I couldn't do it. Yep. And one kid commented talking about uh they're talking about, oh, he well, he's smart. Yeah. You know, he's he's man, he, he's always making moves, you know what he's doing. He's smart. Uh he's not that smart, y'all. Okay, let me just say that. Because if he was that smart, he wouldn't have got caught several times. Mm -hmm. Got caught in everything. If, if you know, if he was smart, he would he would be an actual business guy. Yeah, he you wouldn't know, have three hundred thousand dollars worth of lawsuits. Yeah. Yeah, he'd be an actual business guy instead of a con artist. The difference between some somebody who's like a, a, who's actually smart and a con artist is that you know they they can lie without remorse. You know they had they they have no conscience. Mm -hmm. You know the difference between being smart and having no conscience. Because if you were smart, you wouldn't do all this shit. Because you again, you wouldn't be three hundred at least three hundred grand in debt, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't keep getting caught. You have a, this guy's a problem, man. You know they throw throw in delusional, maybe insane. No, not maybe insane. And it all, I mean, you know what, the thing is, it all led to him committing crimes with ease. Yeah. I mean, bold ass crimes that you would definitely get caught over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, his, 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 uh, his booking of hotel rooms or apartments to where, well, net 90. Oh, so I have to pay for 90 days. We stand here for, for 90 days yeah. and then moving out without paying. Yeah. Well, you know what? I don't have to pay for 90 days. I'll be out in 89. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> good luck catching me on that 90th the day. <laughs> yeah, man. It's it. I tell you, uh, with him, I'm sure that he was, I'm sure that this dude was uh, completely f up from the very get go. But all this started when, uh, when he wanted, to, when, he, when he helped his little brother get into Ohio State because his little brother was, a much better athlete than he was. Now that's something that he at least he's honest about. Yeah, he said he was you know he was the better player, but he fancied himself I guess the better business mind, mm -hmm. you know the better business guy. So his whole idea with uh, this school that he wanted to start before it became completely bullshit, <laughs> bu bullshit high or uh, Bishop Sycamore, uh, his whole thing was that he wanted to help underprivileged black kids like he helped his brother. Mm -hmm. You know, he wanted to help them get into college and who knows if they're good enough, maybe they will go into the NFL. And and it's funny too because I mean, again, I, I grew up with guys like this. I've seen this guy in so many different forms. Oh, me too. Uh, I remember there was a guy who was trying to con our church into fund. He came to our house. He was trying to get people to build and to fund themselves to build a neighborhood in Waco. And he was going around town and nobody trusted this guy. This guy right here is the same way. He was trying to get this 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 facility built uh, for these kids. He's trying to get this facility that, okay, now listen to this. He's trying to get this facility. Now, anybody else would be satisfied with, you know, some nice rooms for maybe teaching classes and a nice gym. He wanted some nice classrooms, some nice gyms. Oh, and on the roof, put uh, outdoor basketball courts. Yeah. Not a court, but uh -huh. courts. This fool even wanted a pond for them to go fishing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's often the case where it, 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 it could be something small and manageable, 
but no, I got big dreams. Yeah, and yeah. he has schematics made for it and everything, and then to, and try to tell people, oh, well, it's just gonna be a million dollars. Now, for something like that, that would sound reasonable, but for what he had, for what he wanted to do with all these lakes and ponds and basketball courts and, you know, this, this, this goddamn Avengers compound mm-hmm. he wanted to make, <laughs> they, people said that's gonna cost hundreds of millions mm-hmm. of dollars, not tens of millions, hundreds of millions. You're looking at a half a, <laughs> half a billion dollar project. Oh, that's all right. I'll just go over here to this uh, goddamn laser tag room or something. <laughs> what you, no, where did he go? He went to like uh, when he couldn't get that made. He like okay, well and then you know I'll go over here to this uh, this 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 indoor soccer facility uh-huh. and just rent that out. You know, and that was the thing with him, man. He just these are people who are always trying to uh, convince people that they they have something going on. Yeah. When is when they don't? Mm-hmm. So they just lie and tell them, oh, it's already in the works. So there was a church. There was a church it's called, uh, I got the name written down right here, the Third District of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. You know they ain't got no money. <laughs> right. And that's exactly what they said. They said, no, we didn't sign up for this bullshit. Mm-hmm. He, said, he said, what? He said we were footing the bill for this? Mm-hmm. He said, no. No, we ain't got no money for them. We already got money for ourselves. Yeah, he had a whole thing of just talking to people, saying, this is what I want to do. I want you to be involved. And like, uh-huh. Yeah. And then later saying, like, yeah, they said they're in. And that did not stop him from recruiting kids. He, like, he had no facility. He had no funding. He had nothing, but he still went, he, he, he had charm. You know, he was very persuasive. So he went and convinced these kids to be signed on to his school, which at the time was called, oh, what was it? Cru- what, Cru- BOC? Or no, it was Christian, Christians of Faith. Okay. So yeah, started cr- all these acronyms, uh, BS High. Yeah. Cough, <laughs> Christians <laughs> of Faith. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and that's when he rented out this soccer facility. And by the way, when he did that, this is supposed to be a school, y'all. This is supposed to be a school. This is how this this is how much this man can persuade people, the right people, people who not people who. And I'm not even say these kids were dumb. These are people who had no prospects at all. Right. They were desperate because they had nothing else going yeah. on for them. So he exploited these people and to sign up for the school, even though the moment you go in, they had no teachers, mm-hmm. none. And if people went to football, they throw the football a few times. They do, you know, little, little runs and everything. And then after that, they did nothing. It was so, it was so unorganized, yeah. disorganized. Yeah, yeah. It's like might as well be going to uh, a pleasure island <laughs> where these kids had just had nothing to do. But lured them in with the idea of like, hey, I'm going to train you to where you can play Division One football and get your test scores up so you can get into a good college. Yeah, yeah. That's And had, even though they had no teachers. Oh, and when they travel, forget about it, man. Tens of thousands of dollars on things that he would never pay back. Hotels, they were getting kicked out of hotels every week. Mm-hmm. Every every week, the boys would go in the lobby and somebody would tell them, tell your, your, your coach to pay us. That's why y'all out in this goddamn parking lot right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a, there's a, 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 they got a, a harassed. Well, I can't say harassed because the paintball place was right. They had to, this paintball uh, business was stalking them online saying, pay us our money. Yeah. And yeah. the man and, 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 and this dude would be like, he'd be like, you know, the, the thing with this is that he would he would just he didn't care. He yeah. would just say, you know what? I don't have the money. You. Yeah. Well, he thought it was a joke. He's like, I can't believe they're harassing me over three hundred dollars. And they're like, it's eight hundred. Yeah, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> yeah. He'd be like, I can't pay it back. What you want me to do? You know, hey, people like me happen. You should have been <laughs> prepared for something like that. This guy, he's I mean, really, no, no. Takes no responsibility for anything. Mm-mm. And or he would just lie about all these things, man. And what's funny about that is that throughout the whole documentary, he lied, lied, lied. And they always made a cut proving him wrong. Mm-hmm. They always cut to something that contradicted the lie that he just said. What's the high school age limit? Does anybody know? Is there some type of organization that says how old you have to be to play high school football? Where's that manual? Does anybody have that? <laughs> <laughs> you mean this one? I mean, I laid that down heavy. That's another con In man thing. OHSAA regulations. You can be 19 years old and play. It's, it's fascinating. Fascinating to watch this guy who has no embarrassment, has no feelings, has no soul. Yeah, well, it's especially fascinating when you've dealt with somebody like this. Because as much as, like, this guy... You know, he's he's performing for the camera. He's he's over the top. And yeah. it gives you the false sense that, well, if I was out in the world, I could spot a guy like that. But you, a lot of times you don't. No, they always get you, man. I, like I said, I've, I've 
I, I worked for some dudes who was trying yeah. to do a record company when I when I first got out of, out of college and there were no jobs. And I got that job as a graphic designer for them and worked with them for a month. And they were like, everybody's going to get paid. You know, we got funding coming in. And then at the end of the month, they wrote me a bad check. Yep. Yep. Happened to me, too. This woman begged me, begged me. I didn't want to do it. She begged me to do illustrations for a book. I didn't want because I remember at the time I was in the. I was in the Austin Film Critic Association. I said, I got to watch all these movies. I got to turn in my, my list. Oh, this is recent. No, this is like, no, man, this is like 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah, 10, 12, probably like 12 years ago. 10, okay. Yeah, trying to get me to do illustrations for this book. And I did them, man. And uh, I didn't, I didn't want to do them. And, it, and when it came time to get paid, you know, she's the middle person. So she's like, well, I'm trying to call them and they're not, you know, they're not, they're not. They're not, they're not answering and I, we're going to pay you. And I was like, okay, they, I said, that money's gone. Yeah. And my, and more importantly, my time is gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I've seen people with no empathy for anything, man. And that's the heartbreaking thing about it. You watch this documentary and it's, it is kind of funny because you're looking at this guy who's doing all this shit to himself because it, I mean, that's what happens. You know, he's like, he's talking a big game, but everything that he does just adds more money to his tab. Yeah. You know, everything he does adds more to his record. Yeah. It, the weird thing is you don't see him like on his off time having an expensive car or living it up because, oh, you know, he, he he's he's more about just the, the glory for himself. He really wants the attention. He yeah. wants to make a name for himself. But this is where things get sad. Because it's infuriating to watch him with these kids, man. I I, I was. Uh, I was so heartbroken. Watching this. Because he. uh you know, he took all these kids, like I said, with who he felt like had. He felt like had uh, uh, no, no choice. And he he targeted them. He, yeah. You know, he no choice but to tell him, yes, we'll sign on. He he knew specifically what he was doing. Uh, so he targeted these kids, man, and he gave them all these empty promises. He uh, he used them. Shit, he even tried to get loans in their names, well, that's, man. That's the thing, man. I and I spent so much of it feeling like, well, man, he really jerked these kids around. But I was like, I still was like, how is he getting some of the money like flying them places? And then it gets revealed he had them sign up for these crooked ass loans yeah. that he was using the money for. Yeah, this, no, this guy, and he actually put them in danger, man. You know, doing that. We know we laugh about this game now, you know, and it is funny. You know, this game with the. Where they, uh, where they just completely, you know, it's comical. They're messing up. But little did I know that a lot of these, 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 these kids and some of these adults too, they were playing game after game back to back, and they shouldn't have been doing that. And so they were, they were tearing all kind of muscles and mm -hmm. ATLs and everything. And they and didn't would, have good equipment. He, he would throw them. Yeah, they had to uh, uh, use each other's helmets, and he would throw them right back in the game, man. So he put these, he put them in danger. As you know, when you watch this, man. When you watch this in the documentary itself, you can see the complete disdain that he has for these kids. Mm -hmm. It actually slipped out at one time. We ain't really have no plays. In terms of the playbook. Yeah, one of them stupid kids said, one of those young men that I like today was like, we got it all mad. <laughs> <laughs> that man's on one of these little stupid ass kids. Oops, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah man, he, he has disdain for these kids and it came out in the documentary. You know, uh, it is, it's horrible. It's horrible to see a black man pass himself, pass himself off as a leader, a role model for these poor black kids and just completely exploit them. But that's the thing, man. You know, it's, that's not the whole story of how do you get this done? You know, this is, uh, cause it wasn't all just Roy Johnson. You have to have a system that enabled that. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, uh, the documentary explores how, you know, the, the, the system set, they set it up for him to do this. You know, it's amazing how there are so many lack of laws for what he did, like creating, like there is no law against creating a fake school. Why? Because nobody thought that they would do that. And that's been the argument uh, against charter schools that's been raging on these last, you know, this last decade, where a lot of Republicans like, we should just put the money in charter schools and let, let them do it. And people finding out a lot of these charter schools don't have a good curriculum. It's yeah. thrown together. There's, there's, there's no governing body. So they, they'll do what they want. And especially in this case, when it's a religious school, that's like, well, separation of church and state. Yep. Yeah, the you know, government can't touch what they do. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, it's a, all these. I didn't think anybody be crazy enough to do the stuff that he was doing. And they are crazy. Don't think that he was getting by with something because he got caught every, every step of the way. He just didn't give a shit. Yeah. He just kept going, kept going. 
And cause uh, and because the system that he's working in, you know, be, 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 because the system here, it's you know, you know how it is, people. We're in Texas, y'all. Football is, is bigger than Jesus. Now, none of these Christians want to tell you that, but if Jesus came down and told them like, "Hey, all y'all got to drop football for a little bit," you know, come to church, people are like Jesus, they crucify him again. They they sure would, <laughs> and then throw football out. <laughs> for they use him as a goalpost. <laughs> right. Yeah, here in the, football is king for a lot of places. So football comes before everything, even the players, and especially the black players. The black players are the ones, they're the biggest commodities and they're the ones that look down the most. You know, so that's, that's, how that, that's how all that got through. And it was funny because there was, a, there was, there was a, an investigator, there was a journalist who was trying to tell people for years, you're like, listen, this is crazy. There's a fake school doing a bunch of bullshit that they shouldn't be doing as adults over there. Playing football mm -hmm. and people were like, nah, I don't give a shit. Yeah. yeah, this guy Ben Ferries, he was on. Man, he was on this years ago. If they listened to this man, oh, this shit, Roy Johnson could have been stopped. But they, they told yeah, they told yeah. this dude off. Oh. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I'm gonna tell you something, man. This dude, he's over here, grinning and laughing, being all funny and jovial, trying to win you over. Those are the scariest ones because sometimes those are the most violent people. It is frightening to know how violent this guy is. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to go into details, but uh, they talk about his violence against women and animals. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He, didn't, he, didn't <laughs> he didn't give a shit. This guy, I would not be surprised if I heard about him killing somebody someday. And that is not a joke. If I found out that Roy Johnson killed somebody, I'd be like, that was, yeah, that was next. And he would totally try to justify it. Yeah, he would. He'd rationalize why he killed that person. I mean, is there a law against that? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> sure, man. Whatever. And if he was smart, this this idiot is not smart, okay? If here's the biggest, here's the biggest indicator that how, how, how dumb he is. If he was that smart, he wouldn't be on a documentary running his mouth the whole time. <laughs> right. Revealing how crooked he is. <laughs> I mean, the man is telling people straight up. He said, I'm not, he's just a line right. He said, I'm, you know, just like some people say, you know, that's, I'm, I'm Kaddish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that means you con. All right. And why he would have to compare that to of all the words he could Because used. that's what he is. Exactly. He knows. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, ego is this man's worst enemy. It's not the money, like you said, mm -hmm. it's the ego. He couldn't wait to get on here and run his mouth. Yeah. It's like, this is. This is like himself, like, like, like if he defended himself in court, he would. This is exactly what that is. Because in his mind, once he gets on and tells it in his words, everybody will come around and yeah. love him and celebrate him. Yeah. Yeah, man. He has the hugest ego. Could not, could not wait to get on here and snitch on himself. I mean, revealed every little thing about his cons. Bragged about a lot of them. Yeah, oh yeah, Bragg. He, he's got that con man thing where you go like, well, you know, you, you're, you, this is the wrong thing you did. He goes like, well, wait, 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 let's break that down. Let's look at each piece, let's isolate each piece and do it separately. And like, yeah, they, but these things don't exist in their own. They're all connected. I don't care how much you say break it down, they are all connected. But the more he broke it down, the more he broke down how he broke the law. <laughs> oh yeah. How he did shit that wasn't right. He looked like he broke it down for us. Yeah. <laughs> in his mind thinking like, oh shit, no, no, no let, let, me, let me tell you how, how justified I am. Yeah. You see? <laughs> I stole chickens from the grocery store. <laughs> like, well, well, yeah, I had those kids sign those loans. How else were we going to pay for it? <laughs> kids were so, didn't feed these kids. Kids were so hungry. Again, this is when you knew something was wrong. Kids were so hungry, they had to steal from Walmart. Yeah. I think we talked about that yeah. when we actually talked about the story. And kids had to like, we didn't want to do it, but we, <laughs> we had to eat something. These kids had to steal from Walmart to eat, man. He encouraged them to do it. And uh, then they got banned from the Walmart. <laughs> they got banned everywhere they went. They just left a path of banishment everywhere they went. You know, uh, there is, I, I, I'm going to tell you, I really enjoyed this documentary, man. For all this, for all this sad parts and very heartbreaking parts, I, I really enjoyed the documentary because it, I mean, you can't help but be fascinated on how this, how this guy functions mm -hmm. and how this whole thing happened. Uh, the only part I probably said I didn't like because, uh, the, you know, they let, they let this guy incriminate himself. Every, you know, everybody was actually uh, pretty good giving their testimonials. And then there's one part where he's like, oh man, I'm out of here, I can't take this anymore. And he, you know, he walks out and the mic is still on. And it seemed like, you know, I was like, that's, that seemed a little staged, man. Oh yeah. 
yeah. quite performative. Yeah, and I was like, you know, this guy's performing enough on his own. We don't need this part right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the mic, oh, the mic just happened to still be on, you know, oh, what, whatever, man. That's reality show type shit, yeah. you know. Um, but I think it's a, I think it's a great documentary. I mean, everybody was was laughing about this, and now we can see how tragic this is too, man. I mean, it kept me fascinated. Yeah, this man is. Hey, listen, you know, this man has. I, he, like I say, he's the devil. Now he hasn't killed anybody, but he did destroy a lot of lives. The only thing I can hope with this is that, and really didn't pay anyone. That's why I said, don't shake this man's hand at all, because the moment you do, you lost time and money. But you know, looking at this. I, I, uh, you know, I, I don't want to give this man attention. I don't want this man to, because that's, he was, the whole time he's talking about, look at me, I'm on HBO now. <laughs> you, joke's on you. But the only thing I can say is that he, the world knows who he is now. I mean, you, I, I don't see how you can watch this documentary and ever anyone ever trust this man. I mean, he's convinced that now that he's famous, he's going to get even more resources and money. I can see him getting, you know, stupid ass women. You know, maybe it's people see him at a bar and buying food and drinks and whatnot. But for somebody to invest in him, yeah. you'd be you'd have to be an idiot to do that. And there's a, well, there's a lot of idiots in this world. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, he exposed himself because he wants the attention so bad. And I think that's the greatest thing about this documentary that he put himself out there. Uh, you know, it's a it's a character study of a real life villain in his own words. Uh-huh. <laughs> he, is, he might as well just be monologuing through this whole thing. I mean, it, it feels like a Netflix show. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, what the hell is I don't want a movie. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want no movie. This is good enough right here. Right. Yeah, we had the man himself. So yeah, I would give this a, I would give this a full price. Yeah, I would too. I'm, I'm usually not even a fan of documentaries because I'm looking at them and going like, ah, I see where you're biased on this. But here, this is one where I was like, wow, there is no other way to spend this. And even when I tried to like look at it, like, what about from the other side? It's like, nah, man, they 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 got the, like he's a real fine because he just puts it all out there. You don't even have to try to. I mean, <laughs> you can refute what he says easily because it's easy to tell that it's a lie and it takes no time to go like, well, no, yeah. you said this, but this is actually the truth. Uh, but and and it does have, you know, maybe you laugh at some of it, but uh yeah, the tragedy of it. And it, 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 it is toward the end where I thought, well, it, at least it's not so bad. But then it actually it actually was. Yeah, like, it like got one, worse. Wait, like one kid really got screwed over badly. Yeah. I'll tell you, man, and, <laughs> until, this, and, until this day, till this very day, this dude here, till this very day, he's still f- up. Of I won't, course. I won't tell you how. I won't tell you why. But you know how they give a report on everybody? Yeah. The, his, they show his picture and his caption should have said, and Roy Johnson is still up <laughs> to this day. Mm-hmm. He ain't gonna, he's not going to stop. Yeah, no, he's not. No, no, he's locked in. That's his personality. Yeah, he's, he's the, way that, the, the way they reported about him at the end of the documentary, I, this guy has to go. He's going to jail at some point because mm-hmm. he, he's, he's too crime. You know, he's, he's too prone to crime and committing crime. Well, also, there were no eyes on him before. Yep. So now he's a person to watch. Yeah, man. Fascinating. Fascinating. Everybody wants to. I, I tell you, man. I hate to say this, but because I don't I wouldn't, you know, I'm not telling anybody to kill this guy. But this guy, if this guy died in a car wreck, the world would be better off without him. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, if he could just go to prison and be off the grid. Th- yeah. This guy needs to be. He, he's still at large. <laughs> this man needs to be taken. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 you know, out of. Uh, he needs to be taken out of society. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be put in Arkham Asylum. <laughs> Unless he cons the guards. <laughs> uh, Batman. And Bat, Bat, you got to kill one time, man. Listen, that's one time. Kill this man. I mean, you've been sleeping on the Joker for a long time. But this dude, come on, man. Go ahead and get it out on this one. Yeah, this, this, we'll give you one. <laughs> ain't nobody going to hate you. If you, you know, we're going to turn around and yeah. not even look. Yeah, ain't nobody going to hate you, Batman, if you kill this dude. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll suddenly give you a little tip if I had, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is it done? Yeah.